Hello, VNTV. Thank you for joining us for the next installment of KDTF Optometry Show. And uh, today we have a special guest. We're going to talk about the importance of eye exams for children. And I want to introduce, briefly introduce Dr. Kim Nuang. She is an optometrist for Radies Children's Hospital here in San Diego. And I'm going to give the, her the floor to kind of introduce and share with our audience uh, whatever you'd like to share, what, what, who you are, please. Okay, yeah, of course. Hi, um, my name is Kim, and I'm actually a recent San Diego transplant from Virginia. Um, I work at Rady Children's Hospital. Um, I got my optometry degree from the State University of New York, where I also did some research and got a master's in vision science. I'm also getting my master's of public health from the University of Alabama in Birmingham. Oh, oh wonderful. Yeah. Well, welcome to San Diego. Thank you. Uh, San Diego oh, Radies, I'm sure we're, we're very uh, welcome to have you here. Yeah, the weather's nice. Yeah, yeah. right? <laughs> How's it in Alabama right now? Um, Does it get cold? I don't know. Or? It's either humid or cold. That's it's right, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so eye exams, children. Why is it so important for children to get their eyes checked? Yeah, so it's really important for children to get their eyes checked mm -hmm. because kids often don't complain mm -hmm. and so it's hard for them to verbalize, you know, that they can't see or they're having difficulty with their mm -hmm. vision. Um, the other thing is that there's a critical period in kids where their visual pathway is still developing. Yeah, what is that? If you could tell our audience. Yeah, so pretty much um, it's the period where their eyes kind of make that connection mm -hmm. to their brain yes. so that visual pathway is developing mm -hmm. and so if we don't catch things by mm -hmm. the age of eight or ten mm -hmm. then it makes it tough for the brain to realize that you know they need that eye to sure. see. Sure, yeah as you mentioned kids they don't really verbalize right, right. and then uh, a lot of times parents they say oh uh, I have my eyes uh, my children got their eyes examined at school yeah. I said oh really there's a doctor that come in and they, yeah. they say no they just read a chart, right? And that, that is just a vision screening. Right. Right. And there's so many, the vision screening is a good starting mm -hmm. place, but sure. there's so many things that the vision screening misses. Yeah, can you mention, like, uh, give me an example. What, what do yeah. we, what, what, what things would they miss? So when a kid, especially when a kid is very farsighted, mm -hmm. um, which means that their eyes is too weak, yeah. um, it takes them a lot of focusing power to see clearly. Okay. So when they're at a screening, mm -hmm. you know, they can focus, increase the focusing power of their eyes mm -hmm. to see clearly at that moment in time. Yeah, because they're young. They're, they have exactly. plenty of focusing ability. I don't have it as much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I need reading glasses soon. Right. <laughs> but to do that all day long yeah. is very tiring. I tell parents it's like carrying around a five pound weight every single day. Oh, that's day, right. I tell them a two know? pound weight, but yeah, that's yeah. the same analogy. Very good. Um, so, you know, if there are ways that we can help, you know, relieve some of that mm -hmm. stress off the kids, then, you know, they tend to do better in school. They can read sure. a little bit longer, excel in school. Yeah, yeah a, lot of par a lot of parents don't realize that. 80% of the learning that children do is through their eyes, right? Right. So if they're not focusing correctly, a lot of times uh, they're, per they're performing poorly in school. And mm -hmm. they, they think it's maybe intelligence or something going on, but in reality, it could just be because they can't see. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it's so important to get the So you usually recommend their first eye exam by what age? Um, I typically say between the age of one and three years mm -hmm. old. Um, you know, a lot of parents are concerned that mm -hmm. Um, their kids are too young for an eye exam, mm -hmm. um, but really there's really no limit on how young a child sure. is. Um, the eye drops that we use mm -hmm. are relatively safe, mm -hmm. and so there's really no harm, no side effects yeah. to getting your eyes checked What's earlier. the age range of patient patients that you see at Rabies Children's Hospital? Um, the youngest I've seen is one month all wow. the way up to 20. Usually kids um, with special needs sure. and still at the hospital. Yeah, because I know as parents, I had parents come in as a patient, as a, um, just to bring their kid in yeah. and then they say, doctor, I see my eye, my kid has an eye turn, right? Yeah. So that's usually, could you talk about that? What's the eye turn or the lazy eye? And they always, yeah. they're not sure what they're talking about, but they... Right, yeah, so typically sometimes when you're younger, a lot of kids, like when you're an infant, mm -hmm. um, up to like a couple months, like three months, mm -hmm. The eyes can look like they're turned in mm -hmm. or out yeah. um, just because the nose bridge, the mm -hmm. skin right here is still kind of forming. Oh, right. okay. um, but after that, you know, if the eyes are still turned in or out, mm -hmm. they should get a dilated eye exam yeah. just because there are many things that can mm -hmm. cause an eye turn, you know. Sure. If there's some sort of pathology in mm -hmm. the back of the eye yeah, that right. can lead to an eye turn. 
if again they're very far sighted, mm -hmm. that could cause, that an, can eye cause an eye turn, or, or disparity well. between the two eyes, right? Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So lots of things that can cause an eye turn, and you know, a quick visit to the eye doctor can really just ease, put the parent's mind at mm -hmm. ease. What's the oldest that you see at Radies? Like, usually, um, with the children. The oldest is probably twenty. Okay, so you um, see up to twenty years old. Right? Um, depends. They're no longer a child though. Yeah, <laughs> you know, if they have special needs yeah, or is with the true. hospital because they have, um, you know, a complicated medical mm -hmm, condition. Sure. Um, but the age that I typically see is um, infant to around like six or seven mm -hmm. is kind of the majority of the So population. your patient base, are they normal exams or are they always, a lot of them are special needs that require special attention? Um, I would say half of them half, are yeah. kids with special needs. Because yeah. um, like, they're referred in from maybe other doctors, right? That Or how, did, how do you see, how do they get to you? Yeah, so usually the pediatrician yeah. sends them over mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of the main Because they suspect way. something's wrong. Right, right yeah, so, um, yeah. and then you know we'll get referrals from you know other optometrists or mm -hmm. ophthalmologists sure. as well. Too. I see. Yeah, so uh, I want to maybe have you share one or two case examples. Yeah. Uh, so you know something that's really caught you through. You've been here about about seven, eight months, or how long has it been? Um, I think only five. Okay, five months. <laughs> or you can even go back to your days because you teach yeah. as well. Yeah. So maybe you could share two or three case examples. Uh, you know, we could talk about it. So um, real world examples that you've seen as a doctor. Yeah, so one example was um, a little kid that came in about mm -hmm. five years old. Yeah. And so mom didn't really have any concerns at all, mm -hmm. but she failed the screening at school. Okay. And so, you know, we kind of um, did her, you know, initial um, testing of mm -hmm. how well each eye yeah. sees. And mm -hmm. one eye sees perfectly, you know, 20-20. Yeah. The other eye was 2080. Mm. But you know, she never complained okay. to mom yeah. and mom doesn't know and yeah. so um, it turns out that you know this eye had really good vision, mm -hmm. no prescription. Okay. This eye was about a plus five. Oh wow. And so a plus five it means that it's she's very far sighted yeah, in is. this eye. And yeah. so it's a risk factor for a lazy eye. Yeah. Um, and so you know, explaining to mom mm -hmm. the importance of wearing the glasses. Mm -hmm. um, and that's just a great example, mm -hmm. you know, that the kids just don't always How old was complain. She? she was five. five? Okay. And so, you know, we're lucky that we, yeah, you know, we caught, caught her enough. before eight. Yeah, because after that, you mentioned the neural pathway. Right. right? And then she's going to get amblyopia or lazy eye. So yeah. she's, she's going to have bad vision that eye her whole right. life, right? Yeah. Because you think of it this way for our audience to explain in layman's terms. So when one eye is really good, the other eye is bad. So the good eye is using like 99% of the vision is going yeah. through the good eye. And so the left eye, uh, the plus five will have really, it's not being used. Right. So if it's not being used, the neural connections won't form. And so they'll, they, you sure will have that disparity in the vision. Yeah. Right. And so, you know, I try to explain to parents because it's kind of sometimes hard to understand. Mm -hmm. So I tell them, you know, it's like, Having a very strong arm and mm -hmm. a weak arm, yeah. you know, you can still pick up stuff, but you're relying on one right. arm, yeah. and you probably want to use two arms. If yeah, you're right. born with two For arms. Sure. So okay, yeah, yeah. you can share one more case example. Yeah, um, um, one more example. Um, I had a 12 month old. Mm -hmm. um, I was the third eye doctor that they yeah. saw, but mom was really concerned because the child really wasn't looking at her face, mm -hmm. wasn't looking at you know baby bottles, wow. and so. Um, when a kid is 12, you know, mm -hmm. if they're not looking at your face and they're not Wait, interested, 12 years old? Or 12 months oh, 12 old, months. I'm oh, okay. sorry, yeah, yeah, okay. um, 12, 12 months, months old, yeah. and they're not looking at your face, they're not interested in toys. Yeah, 12 year old not looking at your face, that could be some other issues. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we won't go into that. Yeah, 12 months old, yeah, 12 too month old. older, okay. if they yeah. don't look yeah. at your face, <laughs> it may be a problem. Sure. Um, okay. So it turns out that he has optic nerve head hypoplasia, oh, wow. so the optic nerve head, which is yeah. that connection from your eye to to your brain that just didn't develop yeah. and so it's important for parents to get a diagnosis yeah. so they know kind of um, what setting they should put their kids mm -hmm. in you know could whether, anything be done about that that scenario yeah unfortunately nothing that yeah. we know of right now I it's know, just kind right? of the way they were born mm -hmm. but it's you know it puts the parents minds to ease that sure. they finally know what's, what's going, going on yeah, and that they can right. plan for the future yeah. you know to have so the, the best corrective vision for that child was uh he was 12 months, months? oh yeah but, he can't really uh, okay but prognosis wise 
What do you think? I would say would poor, say? just because yeah. um, you know he wasn't yeah. even fixed and he follow mm -hmm. or you know wasn't very reactive to light. So basically, um, for the audience, so the optic nerve that's a structure that exits towards the brain, gives us vision, right? right? It's part of the brain, yeah. um, but it didn't form properly, exactly. right? Along with the development, so yeah. Uh, so I will, I'm going to close the show with, I'm going to have you share some pearls of wisdom. That's what I always like to yeah. close our show with. So let's do three pearls of wisdom that we can share with the, to the parents about, you know, children. So what would you say, number, what's the first pearl? Um, the first one and probably what I get the most questions about mm -hmm. is um, kids and iPhones and iPads. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I tell the parents that it's unrealistic nowadays mm -hmm. to have the kids not use the iPad or phone. It's, <laughs> that's, you know, not, that's not going to happen. Right. But it's yeah, limited, kind of right? the age that True. we live in. Yeah. But I tell the parents the 20-20-22 rule. Okay, so, can you talk? Yeah, you yeah. mentioned that. What is that? So for every 20 minutes mm -hmm. that you're staring at something up close, I tell them to just take a 20-second break by mm -hmm. looking at something far away. Yeah. So about 20 feet far away. Because that relaxes the muscles. Exactly. So it's, it's not so locked. In yeah. because being locked in and then we they work up so close they can increase their nearsightedness, right? Right. Yeah. So it's kind of like holding that five pound weight, Lovely, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. you just drop it that for a little bit. It can cause headaches, can cause many yeah. other things. And number two, what's the second and the pro? Two, well, the 20, 20, 20, and then two rule is yeah. no more than two hours of iPad time. time. Okay. So two just hours. keep it to about two that's, hours. That's reasonable, right? Yeah, we can work something out with the kids. Yeah. <laughs> um, the second pearl, you know, goes back into iPad time. So mm -hmm. myopia, which is nearsightedness, is, yeah. um, has, you know, skyrocketed, right? skyrocketed yeah, there's exponentially. Sure. So even in places in Asia, oh, like yeah. Taiwan, yeah. you know, the prevalence is about 90%. Yeah, that's pretty much everyone having glasses right. or needing correction. And you know, the, the problem with myopia is that the eye gets longer and mm -hmm. so you get more complications like retinal detachment, right. glaucoma, right. cataracts, yeah, and sure. so how to prevent it. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, getting the kids to be outdoor more mm -hmm. has been shown to be a good way to prevent sure. the onset of myopia. Yeah. And then if the kids already wear glasses for nearsightedness, mm -hmm. um, I do suggest some sort of myopia control. True. Yeah, that can be talked about in a different mm -hmm. episode, yeah, or pathology. And then what's the third pearl of wisdom? The third pearl in wisdom. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. <laughs> um, I would say, you know, see how your kids are doing in school because, again, kids don't complain, mm -hmm. but yep. when they're not doing well in school mm -hmm. or they can't read a book for more than a couple minutes mm -hmm. or things like that. You yeah. know, that's a really good yeah, clue a that yeah, you know, we should on. bring them in. Because I mentioned earlier, yeah, 80% of the kids learning is from their eyes. And so yeah. they're not being able to focus properly or, you know, they're, they're, they're not going to get the proper learning. Yeah. And they're going to fall back from their students, uh, other students. So Yeah, I had a kid today, actually, last case that I'll share. Okay. Um, Mom was concerned about dyslexia, but mm -hmm. a pediatrician wanted to rule out convergence and accommodation. So how well the kids can use their Wonderful. two eyes. And so that's just a great example of, you know, how the eye mm -hmm. plays such a large role into yeah, learning. Wonderful. And so we yeah. should probably, you know, check that off before we um, dive into some mm -hmm. other things. Wonderful. So take home message is get your eye get the your kids get their eye <laughs> exam uh, before that you said maybe around age one to five i say one to three, three one to three mm -hmm. um a lot of times you know you take them to the pediatrician so they do screen out for certain things right yeah yeah and one to three is kind of a ballpark you know it could be later it could be mm -hmm. earlier depending on you know the symptoms mm -hmm. family history sure. things like but that. definitely by eight by before they enter school Get their first sure. eye exam by age five. So I see a lot of five years olds. Yeah. They always ask, you know, like, like, yeah, get them in before, you know, get them the, the best vision possible, make sure they're seen properly and uh, make sure their eyes are healthy. Because yeah. we can detect some things that, you know, when they, even though they, they see well, right? right? They don't and complain. Just think of it as like a pediatrician wellness check or getting that, Wonderful. the teeth check, yeah, you know, at the right? dentist yeah. before they enter school. Wonderful. Well, uh, Dr. Kim Nong, I, I want to thank you so much course, for your time for and expertise me. for <laughs> educating me and our audience. Awesome. Um, thank you, BNTV, <laughs> for your support. Any questions, I'll be happy, and Dr. Kim Nong will be happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you.